happy Monday, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Excuse Me, Doctor. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my Be Health Empowered family. My name is Dr. Melissa Clark. I'm your host, also known as Dr. Mel. Thanks for joining us to kick off another amazing week that we are going to create for ourselves. At Excuse Me, Doctor, you know we are here to bring you health topics that are based on science so you can be confident and empowered to make the best health decisions for yourself, your family, and your community. And we don't really deal in a whole lot of speculation. We clear up misinformation and we debunk disinformation. We're here every Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, streaming on YouTube and Facebook. Welcome to my newbies. So if you're joining us for the first time or if you haven't yet done it, please hit that like button on Facebook or if you're on YouTube watching us, please hit that subscribe button. We appreciate you greatly. So, you know, tonight we are going to be talking about that COVID quarantine 15. That's, of course, referring to the weight that many people have gained during the pandemic due to anxiety and stress eating, comfort food, maybe less exercise, less getting out. And, you know, of course, we also know that being overweight or, and obese is a risk factor for COVID-19, um, as, as it is also for strokes and for heart attacks and diabetes and any other number of conditions. So it's not just a matter of getting back into those jeans that you wore back in 2018. It's also about making your health better overall. And so we have two wonderful guests that we're going to be talking to tonight, a chef and a naturopathic physician who are going to guide us through helping us address those pounds that we might have put on during the pandemic. So make sure you share, share, share this episode right now with your girlfriends, your family, anyone who you think needs to hear this. We're going to be bringing them on in just a few minutes. But as always, we start off with our co-producers, Ms. Lila Mays and Mr. Wayne hey, Price. Hey, 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 hey. What's going welcome, on? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So can't they share this with their husbands and boyfriends too? Or is this just for women? I mean, let me know. No, I I'm said family. It, oh, no. If I'm out of it. I no, I said worry. family. Family, boyfriends, uncles, cousins. Okay, there you go. Sons, everybody. There you go. I mean, I just I ain't got to worry about my fifteen if we ain't got to share with no men. I mean, well, I mean, you know, and I, I want to really... make sure everybody starts writing their questions in too. Start now. Right. Start writing your questions yeah. in. You know, we want you to like, share, comment. You know, the yeah. whole routine. See, like, comment, and subscribe. We got it together. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. Mel, let's go. Let's go. All right. Let's hit that weekly recap that we do. There we go. Here we go. Well, as you know, we start off with the numbers of people affected by COVID-19. And as of today, we know that we have 34,205,000 cases of COVID-19. And and unfortunately, as far as deaths, we have over 612,000 souls who've been lost to COVID. But, you know, the good news is that the death rates from COVID are plummeting by 85% since January. Yep. Um, and so that's, that's wonderful. The thing is, unfortunately, what we're hearing is that the people who are getting sick and unfortunately passing away from COVID are younger and younger now. People in their 30s, 40s, 50s, if they haven't been vaccinated, they're accounting for the higher proportions of, of people succumbing to COVID because people 65 and older, three out of every um, 65 plus person is vaccinated, which is wonderful. Okay. And so we're seeing death rates in that group go way down. That's wow. Good. Okay, so that takes us right on into vax facts. Yeah. So we have about 138 million people who are fully vaccinated. That's about 42% of the United States population. Okay. Um, we have over 300 million people who've gotten at least one dose. Wow. And yeah, so mm. it's, it's rolling. Now, 
you know, we have our superstar states, Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, over 50% of their population fully vaccinated. Okay. We got our states to bring it up the rear. You know who those are, the same ones. Mississippi, Same. Alabama, and Georgia, less than one in every three people vaccinated. Cool. And as a matter of fact, Alabama, Alabama governor, governor, sorry, signed into law that, you know, that that basically um, you can't require vaccines if you're an employer or a venue or anything else. So that's probably not going to work in their favor. Yeah. They're going to get hit. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, the 65 plus, they are out partying right now. 75% of them are Living vaccinated. My, <laughs> my mom, who is 88, all the residents of, of where she lives, they all went to the beach last week. The, um, wow. So, uh, they're living the champagne yeah. life. This they are living the champagne life about. right now. Yeah. <laughs> this wow. is what Neo was talking about. Right. right. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So wow. So wow. Well, look. Let's go to on that list. Are we finished the vax facts? I forgot yeah. to ask. So yeah. I I have to bring this up because he was a hero of mine. Clarence Williams the third passed this week. And uh if anybody saw Mod Squad, grew up in the Mod Squad days, and anybody that grew up on uh on Purple Rain. Yeah. He played Prince's he father. He was the dad. Yeah. Yep. Don't yeah. I keep the heat on. That was a big, big line <laughs> from that movie. <laughs> he, yeah. uh, the movie with Wesley Snipes, Sugar Hill. He died of prostate cancer. But something great happened this week. We had a possible breakthrough with prostate cancer, Dr. Mel. Yeah, well, rest in peace, uh, Mr. Clarence Williams the third. Um, and it, it was just, um, you know, I think the same day probably that he passed away that this announcement was made about prostate cancer. We know that it's the second leading cause of death for men right behind uh, lung cancer and black men die of prostate cancer at twice the rate that white people do. Wow. Um, and once it spreads, just like any other cancer, it's much harder to treat, which is why this particular medication that just came out is a form of IV therapy, uh, liquid radiation therapy. They've had really good results because it um, travels in the body to wherever the prostate cancer has traveled, targets it, and can eliminate it. And so it's decreasing what they've seen in the trials, the risk of death from prostate cancer by 40%, which is wow. pretty significant for people with advanced prostate cancer. For sure. Wow. Um, all right. So let's get into uh, health care being down for minorities. This this actually resonates with me because I was not going to the doctor um, when we first went into shutdown um, during the pandemic. But it sounds like a lot of black and brown people sort of had the same mindset as one of your co-producers. Yeah, Dr. Mill. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's true. And I mean, you know, black and brown people knew more people dying from COVID. So it was more mm -hmm. real to them in terms of, hey, you know, I think I'm not going to, you know, go get that preventive mammogram, which is basically what this study out of Washington state showed that mammograms were down by 50 percent. But most of that decrease was due to Hispanic black people, Hispanic people, black people, people on Medicaid, people with no insurance who were electing not to go get screened. Um, and so it's important now that things are opening back up, that if you were one of the people who have deferred your mammogram or your colon screening or just your visit to your doctor, your yearly visit to your doctor, or if you're working uh, with a health coach, anybody, reestablish contact with them so <laughs> that you can work on your health goals and make sure that you're getting all the preventive screenings that you need to get. Definitely. I, I went and had my mammogram a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Okay. I, I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. All okay. right. Come on now. Come on, doctor's appointment. So that brings me <laughs> to this. That brings me to the wonderful Dr. Kizmikia Corbett. And uh, she said, I, she in an interview on 
MSNBC, she said uh, they had been waiting with that mRNA, that messenger, with this vaccine platform that uses mRNA. And I read something about them using it for other, other, uh, you know, other diseases. Applications, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. So, you know, that technology was was at least a decade in the making. And we've seen that it has produced a remarkably safe and effective vaccine that has caused a death rate and infection rate from COVID to go way down. Um, and it's important to keep in mind that messenger RNA is sort of like the, the copy of a cookbook recipe. And it basically gives instructions. In this case, in case of the COVID vaccine, it's being used to give instructions for how to make a piece of the virus so that our immune systems can recognize it. But it actually now, uh, now that it's been proven to work, they're saying, hey, we can use this same thing for other things. So vaccines around HIV are being looked out at, at, sorry, herpes, a flu vaccine that you wouldn't need to get every year. Um, so that's the viruses. But then they're also looking at it for giving instructions in the case of something like sickle cell disease or um, multiple sclerosis, where there might be a protein that's missing that needs to be programmed or, or um, uh, developed in your body for your body to respond to. Mm -hmm. And so they're also looking at it for those kinds of treatments too, and even certain cancers like some skin cancers, melanoma, and brain tumors. So it looks like because of the success with messenger RNA technology and COVID, we can look for a lot more possible advances in medicine in the next few years. Wow. Okay. Great. That is great. Um, okay, so this is this is a hot topic. Um, employers asking their employees or demanding that they get vaccinated. Is it is it legal, Dr. Bell? Turns out it is. Um, so the EEOC uh, states that employers can legally require their employees to be vaccinated for COVID-19, but the employers have to comply with reasonable accommodated accommodations of the American with Disabilities Act and the Civil right. Rights Act of 1964. So all the EEO mm -hmm. considerations. And that if there is a state law in place, it doesn't supersede it. So remember we talked about Alabama putting a law into place saying that employers couldn't require it. So this won't right. supersede it. Um, but it, it also turns out employers can also offer vaccine incentives. They can distribute information about COVID-19 vaccinations. I've been doing a lot of talks to em uh, employers asking me to talk to their employees and answer their questions about the vaccine. So that's legal too. Um, employers should also keep in mind individuals or demographics that may face barriers to receiving a vaccine and they have to provide reasonable accommodation for those who are exempt from mandatory immu immunization. So those things have to be kept, keep kept in mind, but overall, yes, it is totally above board for employers to require vaccination. It, it's interesting. I work in production. And so I, I am, my staff have, either been vaccinated or are going to be vaccinated. But the people mm -hmm. who are in the program, they work on set, right? And so studios, to my knowledge, are not demanding that folks be vaccinated. However, you know, they test every week, they test every several days, they have all these protocols in place. But what's interesting is the folks who wanna work uh, they're getting vaccinated, like for day players and that kind of thing. It definitely mm -hmm. pushes them to the front hold of the on, line. When you say production, just let's be clear. You mean movie production because you're. I in mean LA. television and movie, right? Come on. Okay, yes. and, and what's and a day? Movie. What's a day player? A day for player those of is us not someone. Know? Okay, sorry. So a day player would be someone who isn't. Um, fully staffed, who isn't a full time employee of the the production. Got the, it show the feature whatever it is so they might need extra hands or someone called in sick a day player would be someone who would come in and fill in for whoever that person is that didn't work that day day wow. players are moving to the front of the line if they're vaccinated you know wow. um yeah. particularly for 
uh, some of the work that I do. Yeah. I mean, so I think that's an incentive, but um, yeah, work. It's interesting. Yeah. Work, <laughs> a paycheck. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. There we go. Come on. Makes paycheck. sense. Makes sense. <laughs> Come on, paycheck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, that's, that's, that's incentive enough since people have been out of work for so. a year. Some, some of us. Yeah. 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 And I would imagine concert venues, performers too, uh, you might be seeing the same thing. Wow. Yeah, I yeah. bet. Well, I bet. you know, uh, <laughs> I was in the airport and a, a good friend of mine, I'm a musician, you might not be able to tell, but I was in the airport and a friend of mine uh, asked me, hey man, have you gotten a shot? I was like, yeah, I'm fully vaccinated. And he was like, yeah, I took my first shot. He said I wasn't going to take it but it was because I I found out I may not be able to travel overseas to perform mm -hmm. if I didn't have it. So that was right. his incentive. Right. Yeah. Paycheck. Paycheck. <laughs> paycheck. Come yeah. on, paycheck. Money talks. <laughs> right. Okay. right. Exactly. Well, that is it for our weekly recap. So that brings us to the weekly debunk. debunk. Stopping Stop misinformation in this track. track. Hey, I'm just saying, if we're not going to reach herd immunity, there's absolutely no point of me getting vaccinated, right? That was from Tyrone Twitter fingers. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Tyrone Twitter fingers. <laughs> Excuse me, Dr. Mel, is that true? Not exactly. So first of all, let's just briefly recap what herd immunity is. That's that number that epidemiologists say they think it's around 80 percent 85 percent of the population once they get vaccinated and have immunity to uh the coronavirus that it will stop the spread of of covid because the virus won't have anybody to jump to um so i had a conversation with someone who said you know, you know, I'm not going to get vaccinated because we're not going to get to herd immunity anyway. Right. Um, yeah. And basically what we talked about is, you know, don't really worry about the rest of the country. Think about the people that you interact with the most, your tribe, if you will, reaching herd immunity. So who is that? Those are the people that you spend the most time with, the people that you want to hug, the people you travel with, the people you want to be around, the people you want to get with. It's definitely those people that you live with and maybe it's the family that you want to see this summer at the family reunion, your faith family, the people you vacation with. Um, and, and the booty so, call. And, and the booty call. Let's, <laughs> and the booty calls too. Like Dr. Mel ain't going to say, gonna say it like that. Did but you the just bring you up a get booty with. call? Like, you yes. get vaccinated for a booty it's call, real. of course. Yes. Well, who, whoever it is, it might be your bidwiz <laughs> partner, it might be your fraternity or sorority or your golf or fishing buddy. It could be anybody. Okay. But well, that that's who you need to be thinking about. Do they have, do you as a group have herd immunity? Because it's those people that right. you interact with that are going to be the most important. And so mm -hmm. if you do your part to protect them, then that's really all you need to be focused on, not really whether the country as a whole is going to reach herd right. immunity. So and then the flip side of that, too, some people are thinking, well, I'm just going to let them reach herd immunity and then that'll protect me. <laughs> Again, that's like a chicken and the egg thing, because if you're waiting for everybody else to do it, it's not going it's not going to get done. So um, I would also say the flip side, you know, do your part. Think about your family. Think about your community if you're not concerned about yourself. Mm -hmm. And there you have it. The weekly debunk. All right. Well, um, thank you all hey, for uh, helping me with the weekly recap and the weekly debunk. Of you're course. welcome. I just want to remind everybody: let's keep it grown. <laughs> <laughs> and and I hate. I'm not going to say grown and uh, and efficient. And, and let's put those questions about the COVID yes. fifteen in our comment section, all right? Yes, hit like and hit share. Hit like and hit share, please. Hit subscribe, hit subscribe too, all right? All right, yeah. thank you all. We are gonna move on with the show because I know everybody wants 
to hear my next two guests because we're going to be talking about the fact that I know I did it. I hit those ice cream, some ice cream and potato chips and sugary drinks occasionally. Um, maybe for you, it was the stress, anxiety that resulted in a little carb loading. Maybe it was your lack of leaving the house uh, that disrupted your exercise routine that you had. You know, you'd stop at the gym coming home from work. Um, did your sweatpants that you wore every day help your denial that you might have been gaining a little bit of weight? Well, if any of those things ring home, you are not alone. A lot of people have been going through it. And so the number one, one of the number one requests that I've had is, Dr. Mel, can you do a show about weight gain, the COVID-15? So we're here. We are here for it. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about culinary medicine tonight, about food, hormones, weight gains, how to cook nutritious food. And for that, we have two incredible guests who are joining us. First, we have Dr. Lisa Lewis. She's a leading licensed naturopathic doctor and acupuncturist who uses a combination of natural medicine, Chinese medicine, and Western medicine for transformational healing. She's the CEO of Lewis Health Healing Institute, owner of Nature Doctors N Nutritionals, author of Stop Stressing Me Out, Seven Solutions to Overcome Overwhelm and Conquer Disease Naturally, and a co-host of The Blend Talk Show. Welcome, Dr. Lisa. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk about this topic because this is definitely hot on everybody's list. <laughs> Absolutely. And our second guest um, is Chef Riri. She's eclectic, creative. Chef Sherry Riri Edwards, a.k.a. the healthy eating, active living chef. She went from a corporate PR career to being in the kitchen to birth Chef Riri's Kitchen. Uh, no E in kitchen, by the way, sharing her award-winning culinary skills and contagious approach to intentional eating. Welcome, Chef Riri. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Well, myself, how to do, how to do, how to do. It's such an honor to be here, Dr. Clark. Thank you so much. Super excited to start talking about how people can stay excited about eating healthy stuff that tastes good. All right. Wonderful. Well, you know, we're going to start off with Dr. Lisa, because I want to kind of set the stage for you telling us from the medical perspective, what makes people gain weight? Is it simple, as simple as, you know, calories in, calories out or eat less, move more? Can you break that down for us? Yeah. So it, there's so many different imbalances and so many different problems and challenges that can cause weight gain. And I believe that most people think about it from calories in, calories out, right? They think, oh, if I eat so much, then I will gain so much. Or if I starve, I'll lose, right? Um, most mm -hmm. people really think about it from the perspective of what they eat as far as the amounts. But really, it's about quality of food, right? And it's also about what that food is doing to the body, inside the body. Um, mm -hmm. And most people don't really think about the fact that the food is, and food is medicine, right? And food is right. one of the most important things, but of course it's movement, it's exercise and hormones are a huge um, factor as well as the digestive system, because it's not like what we eat is what we ingest, what we absorb or what we die, right? And so there's so many factors. So people are always like running on the treadmill and doing all kinds of crazy things to try and lose weight. I mean, then they plateau or they don't lose weight and they don't understand why, but then they don't take those other factors into consideration. Yeah. Right. Because the other thing is obesity is a disease, right? And you mentioned something about hormones being a part of that. Help us understand what role do hormones play in that? Yeah. So hormones are these messengers. So they take, um, signals to different parts of the body to help make sure that the body does what we want it to do, right? And mm -hmm. so there's uh, hormones that help burn fat, but then there's also hormones that store fat or what we call fat storing versus fat burning hormones. And so mm -hmm. unfortunately, most of the fat storing hormones are in the women category. <laughs> right, <laughs> because, right. Um, 
Well, but fortunately, so estrogen, um, insulin, thyroid, you know, those kinds of things. Of course, testosterone is more of a fat burning hormone. So, um, right. and, most, and we see that all the time because men just have to say, I'm going to lose weight and they lose that's, weight. Right. Whereas right. women. Yeah, it's a lot more challenging. Do not bet. Do not do not bet a man. Do not say, <laughs> OK, we're starting today. Whoever loses the most in X period of time wins. Don't do right. it. OK, right. <laughs> don't do <Right>. it. <laughs> So I, I, you know, I really, I really think the focus really for people should be health. So when I think about weight loss, I think about health because naturally if we're, you know, our body desires health, it desires to be at a, at a natural weight. And if it's at a weight that's not natural, either too, too much or too little weight, then we see that there's something out of balance. And the, the key is, doing the due diligence, understanding the cause and getting to the root of what it is. And most people just think it's food, but it's so much more, so much more. Right. No, absolutely. And I mentioned obesity as a, as a disease and it's a, mm -hmm. there's a lot of complex things going on. You mentioned being at an ideal weight. A lot of people don't realize that for every pound they're, they're overweight, that's three pounds of extra pressure on your knees. So I mentioned heart attacks and strokes and, and diabetes. Arthritis is also associated with extra weight as well. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about um, some foods that might help to address um, metabolism? Or well, not even foods, but just things that can address your metabolism. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I think about from the perspective of like, what's a fat burning food. Um, I also think about like vitamins and minerals because that's when the macros and the micros. So the proteins, the fat, the carb versus the calcium, the minerals, the vitamins and things of that nature, right? Because that's really why we eat. We eat to get mm -hmm. all of those components so that they can make those biochemical reactions happen in the body so that then we can do what we need to do, right? So I think of um, calcium. So most people think, oh, milk, it does the body good. No, no, no. Okay. Calcium is a very, it's a fat burning food or it boosts the metabolism, but we can get so much calcium from, from broccoli and from, you know, vegetables and from, you know, raspberries and different things, you know what I mean? Like from, from leafy greens. So there's so many different ways to get vitamins and minerals. So when I say calcium people, please do not pour down the cow's milk because we don't, we don't like cow's milk, okay? Because <laughs> um, <laughs> that's an inflammatory agent. So that's going to create um, a lot of immune imbalances and complexes, and that's one thing. Um, definitely, when we think about vegetables, we think about it from the fiber perspective. So in, in, even oats, um, they will increase fiber, you know, the increased fiber will help your body to not just eliminate the food, but it also slow down the process that sugar that um, insulin, reduce the insulin in the body and slow down how you process sugar and support your body in that way. Um, all the peppers, the habaneros, the cayennes and the chili peppers, they also help boost metabolism. Um, gosh, I mean, there's just so many foods, magnesium foods, avocados, things of that nature, because they help relax the muscle, um, help your body digest much more efficiently, um, things of that nature. So, I mean, we could be here all night talking about the foods because the, the, the key is what the food does in the body. So not necessarily choosing the food per se, um, but like creating the meal around it, making sure you're getting a combination. You're making sure you're getting the right macros, the right protein, fat, and, you know, carb combinations to make sure right. that everything is, is in balance so that you're not getting too much of one, not enough of the other. And you're getting a variety because most people eat the same 10 foods. I mean, mm -hmm. the same 10, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> Well, so, exactly. So you're not going to get a variety from the same 10 foods. So yeah. You have to no, that. you're absolutely right. And and that's one reason why I'm really glad that we have Chef Riri here tonight, because I want to bring her into the discussion and um, tell us, because uh, Dr. Lisa mentioned, you know, menu planning. Tell us mm -hmm. uh, a little bit about your philosophy around menu planning and some of the exciting things you do in the kitchen. 
You know, it, it is so wonderful that um, Dr. Mel, I love that she has gone ahead of me because she has the DR behind her name and she brings the, um, the, the science. And what she ended with is what I would like to start with. Menu planning for me is the whole philosophy of taking culinary adventures. Dr. Mel just mentioned that people are in this, this box, if you will, eating the same thing over and over again, shopping at the same grocery store, going down the same aisles. Even if they are trying to do the healthy thing, they're eating the same vegetables over and over again. It is summertime in the um, DMV. We have a saying in Jamaica, say all fruits ripe. That means that everything is in season, everything is blossoming. I love taking culinary adventures. I advise my clients all the time. Everybody has a smartphone. It's called a smartphone for a reason. If you come across something that you've never seen before in your life, stay in that grocery store, Google it, look it up. There's a plethora of recipes out there. And normally taking a culinary plant sometimes so it will cost you less than 10 bucks. So culinary adventures, that's my number one key in doing menu planning if you will, right. so that you're not, you're not stuck in the spot. And I tell my clients all the time that, look, your palate could be lying to you. It could be lying to you. You're looking at something like, oh, 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 oh I can't eat that. Or it may have been something that you experienced when you were younger. Beets is number one. If I had yes. a quarter for how many of my clients who, are, who were former beet haters or beet lovers now, <laughs> Oh yeah, now, I love I would be, yeah. I would be exceptional because they have in their minds this concept of the thing in the jar that their grandmothers gave them that tasted horrible. And then you you allow yourself to take the culinary adventure, experience it, spiralize with some lemon juice, something as simple as that. Um, experience yeah. it, roast it. Now it tastes like potatoes almost, and it's a whole nother experience. So many patty, number one, get out of the box, take culinary and Adventures. Go to farmers market. I love that advice. Go down yeah. a different aisle. Take that adventure. I love that advice, and and maybe you could just tell us too. Um, you mentioned that you were in a uh, or in your intro I, I that I made. You mentioned that you were in a corporate PR job and that you made yeah. the transition to being mainly in the kitchen now. Tell us a little right. bit about that, because I think you were on a weight loss journey of your own when that happened, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the, um, the, the universe has, has a wonderful way of like um, setting you up. <laughs> and yeah. I, I was set up. I was set up. Because in my corporate life, um, when I was 220 pounds, a size 18, my day-to-day -day job was managing health campaigns for the African-American community. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. yes, I was doing media talking points. I was creating brochures. I was doing ads. I was doing PSAs all around different campaigns that targeted the African American audience, helping them, trying to teach them how to eat better, move more, to prevent the onset of the of these diseases that, that affect us. Like we just run, run down, down the gamut. And me, the PR person, the campaign manager, right, was the right. poster child for what I was writing about. So there there came a time in my, my life, and I'll be very tra transparent, um, the marriage failed, the, the husband left, I was in a funk, and <clears throat> I wanted to, um, to get back to who I was pre-marriage. You know, so mm -hmm. I went on my own personal weight loss journey. And guess what I did? Everything that I was writing and putting out in press releases and PSAs and media advisories and brochures, I started to live that. Because I'm like, okay, um, this has worked for, for, the, for the target audience. Let me start to, to implement it for me. So at 220 pounds, I started on my weight loss journey. Once again, being transparent, I did the um, fat thing initially. Dr. Lewis, don't judge me. But I did, I did the, um, the fat thing where I was doing the B12 shots and everything because I was looking for a shortcut, if you will. Yeah. And um, that didn't work because it worked for a minute. I hit a, a plateau and then the weight I thought I lost came back and brought their, their, their second cousins with them. So <laughs> I decided to go ahead and um, started to believe my, my own PR and to apply old 
school philosophies about mm -hmm. having a wealthy life, which is being sensitive to your body, eating food that, as Dr. Lewis said, do an internal work yeah. so that the external can, um, can um, happen. And right. just falling in love with having those substitutions and being in the kitchen, um, you know, the, the, the PR live just kind of like faded in the background and the kitchen kept calling me. So I said, yes, and here I am, Chef Riri. Yeah. Wow. What a wonderful story. And I know that you mentioned in there, you know, a uh, um, um, failed marriage that you wanted to get back to who you were. A lot of times, though, for some people, emotional um, challenges uh, that such as that can actually have the opposite effect. And especially since we've come through this pandemic, there's been a lot of anxiety, a lot of loss, a lot of grieving loved ones. Um, and that those have been roadblocks um, for people. So Dr. Lisa, can you talk a little bit about what role stress has in weight control and yeah. how does managing stress, how is that a component of weight control? Yeah, so stress is is huge. I mean, we know it's a factor for pretty much ev every disease. Um, and again, we don't know what comes first, the chicken or the egg sometimes. Is it the stress that causes the disease or is it all the factors and the imbalances happening in body that then is putting stress on the system? We don't know. We don't care. Mm -hmm. We just know that we have to get to the stress. We have to treat the stress. And so... I think that it was a like this pandemic was kind of like a, a perfect storm. Um, it it then created a lot of imbalance in many different organs, um, the lung, the digestive system, like all of these different organs that you requ that require the support to lose weight. So when you talk about stress, you're talking about cortisol, right? You're talking mm -hmm. about in in most cases, you're talking about the increase of the of the I, I say the hormone that's really there to save our lives, right? Because yeah. it is the fight or fight flight, flight. One. that that's yeah. right. And as you know, it, it, it is why we still are on this planet as, as humans. Right. And so when the stress is too high for too long, then the body, then the adrenal glands, they start to what I call Peter out. Right. Um, they don't mm -hmm. produce as much and that's adrenal fatigue, but most people, start off in what we call that, that uh, stage one, which is where it's excess, where the cortisol is like high, high, high. That is then going to cause the body to store fat because cortisol mm -hmm. has a significant effect, especially on blood sugar. Because as you just think you're running from the tiger, right? So the tiger right. says, you know, the tiger's like, you know, if I'm going to get you, so what's the body going to be, it's going to, it's going to increase its it's blood sugar because it needs energy to actually run. You're either going to run or you're going to stand up and fight, right? And so, right. so you need that elevated blood sugar. You need the elevated blood pressure. Um, you, you need to shut the digestive system down because it doesn't want you stopping looking for food when you're running from the tiger. It, it sh shuts the re reproductive system down because it doesn't want you looking for anything else while you're running from the tiger, right? So... <laughs> Right. So, right. so all, so all of these systems get shut down and then the body just can't work effectively. And so one of those major imbalances is the digestive system, mm -hmm. the thyroid, the thyroid, because cortisol actually inhibits thyroid, the thyroid production, um, right. also has a significant effect on leptin, which is another hormone that controls how much we eat, you know, whether we're going to mm -hmm. put that fork, take that fork and, and, you know, so the key is understanding like how the body works and knowing that cortisol, it, it does save our life is there to support us, but in excess, mm -hmm. it, it can create a lot of damage, a lot mm -hmm. of inflammation. It's, it's the strongest anti-inflammatory known to man. So it's there to support us in inflammatory times, but if it's elevated for too long, then it causes inflammation and inflammation is then going to contribute to um, diabetes, obesity, like all the chronic diseases. All the right? chronic and diseases so, we know about. Yeah. All yeah. Of, right. And itis, yeah. Right. And so, so yeah. yeah. So it sounds like what you're saying. So it sounds like what you're saying is a part of any weight control plan and healthy eating plan 
is also getting your mind right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Well, yeah. addressing getting the stress. Right. Yeah. Remember, addressing the stress. Yep. Mindset. Yeah. Mindset. Yeah. But all of those can't happen if you're grieving. Right. <laughs> if you're <laughs> if you're in a state where you don't know when you're going to, um, you know, uh, we just you talked about people losing their jobs and having to take the vaccination mm -hmm. in order to travel and to get to work, like all the amazing, wonderful things that you made that thought that were part of your life were taken away during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do? We're going to choose food because mm -hmm. food has always been that thing that comforts us. Right. And so, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then the sleep, the exercise, like all of the things that are responsible for a healthy lifestyle were topsy turvy during the pandemic. Right. And mm -hmm. so, so if, if we, if you knew this was happening and you prepared then you were one of those people who didn't rush and go get toilet paper. You ran to the vegetable aisle, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And you and you right. you stocked up on the vegetables, and you you know possibly got your Vitamix or kind of blender and blended things up and did what you could do. But the key was lifestyle was um, shifted and changed, so we had to shift and change our lifestyle. And that's the key. Right. Stress is a lifestyle disease. And that's what we, yes. have to, we always have to shift our lifestyle in order to balance stress. Yes. And I always say that whatever you're doing to address stress in your life, you have to do it on a daily basis because the stress sores are there every day. Yes. And so uh, there's so much stuff I want to ask you, but I got to bring in the audience, because I know that they must have some questions. So Lila and Wayne, can you rejoin us and let us know what's going on in the chat? If anybody wants to ask Dr. Lisa oh, or chat, Chef Riri any the questions. Chat is going, going off. Sure. <laughs> chat is going off. <laughs> so look, uh, we, we have a few questions and, and I'll start. And we have a few comments. Uh, comments. So yeah. let's go to the comments. This is a question coming from uh, Pamela Singleton. Uh, it's Dr. Lewis. What is your thought on intermittent, fast, intermittent fasting? Fasting. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. So especially um, if you're trying to manage your weight uh, long term right? Um, because you have to trick the body. It's like, you know, like mm -hmm. when you're, when you're working out, your body requires to do something different in order to take it to the next level. You can't just keep doing the same things over. That's how I look at intermittent mm -hmm. fasting as a way to really shift the body, reduce the number of calories you're taking because you're eating later or eating for a shorter period of the day. Um, you can control what you're eating much more efficiently and you can, and, and, and you're really teaching yourself how to eat as we should, like stopping to eat at 7 p.m., not eating too early, you know, like all the amazing things. So the 16-8 is, um, is the intermittent fast that I usually recommend where you're fasting for 16 hours and eating, eating for eight hours. That's the best. I think that's the best option for most people. <laughs> Great so, Doctor Lewis, can you Pam. just can you? It was that's a great question. Can you break that down just even further, just for yeah. people who don't really understand what intermittent fasting is? You yeah. you said sixteen eight, but yeah, yeah. Can okay. can you tell the people exactly yeah. what that means? For sure. So, intermittent fasting is is basically when you're choosing to fast for a certain period of time. Um, well, and when we say fast, we don't mean no food. You can have water, you can have broth, you can have things that don't have uh, calories, like a lot of calories. Right. And so, so you're basically eating for a shorter window throughout this throughout that day. So it's not as if you're fasting for a whole day. You're just fasting for a certain period of time. Now, most people fast when they're sleeping, right? Right. So, so if, if we're fasting, say for instance, you wake up at eight a.m. You would then to do a 16 hour fast, you might not eat until 11, you may eat at 12, and then you might mm -hmm. eat from, uh, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. That would be your eight hour window. And then you can usually, I'm not gonna say you can eat whatever you want during that period, but um, you know, you, you, want, you want to eat responsibly, right. but you're, you're reducing that window of time so you can, you can effectively reduce your calorie count significantly. And it's really powerful. And 
And the and the I think which is you said it already, but I think it's really important because I think some people think, oh, I have eight hours to eat. I'm gonna eat everything in these eight hours, but that's not the point, right? <laughs> everything in sight, the, right? The point is to reduce your caloric intake, even yeah. in those uh, those yeah, hours yeah. that you've broken the fast, well, correct? Or not yeah. necessarily reduce it, but I think to Chef Riri's point in terms of choosing healthy foods. To right. eat during okay. those eight hours. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, it's usually combined with another eating protocol. Like I remember doing mm -hmm. keto and at the same time right. doing ketogenic diet, I was also intermittent fasting. So you can add it to whatever kind of healthy eating protocol mm -hmm. you're using and it just enhances it. Okay. Okay. So also in our comments, people are commenting and I want to get Chef Riri to comment on this. Someone mentioned your pineapple tea. They said your pineapple tea will heal you, <laughs> your, your soul, whole soul. Your whole soul. <laughs> so tell us what, what oh. dish the pineapple tea goes with, Chef Riri. Oh my goodness. I love my people. I love them. I love them. So um, the, the pineapple tea, it is, it was not invented by, by me, but it's definitely a, a Jamaican thing. But the ingredients of it are so beneficial to your, your body. It is amazing that I'm, I'm actually selling medicine to people because <laughs> what it actually is, it is comprised of fresh pineapples, ginger roots, cinnamon sticks that is fermented. We allow it to brew for three days. So it's actually a tea. That's why it's called pineapple tea. Then it is sweetened with, um, with organic cane sugar and fresh squeezed lemons. So the thing about it is that, and um, I, I love having Dr. Lewis here because if you won't believe the chef, you'll believe the, um, the um, doctor. You just have to stop at ginger root That's right. and what ginger root does. And I love what Dr. Lewis said, and I wrote it down, what food does inside the body. Mm -hmm. I get excited when people ingest that going inside the body because I know what ginger is going to do inside the body for your digestive tract, for inflammation, for boosting your, your immune system, all of that thing. And look, if you don't believe me, just check in Jamaica and ask them what they believe ginger can do. Ginger is, is like a culinary god. There's a whole country. ginger, there's a whole ginger beer, <laughs> which is not I'm alcohol. Tell you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so, right. Um, so that, that pineapple tea is one of the ways that I encourage people to celebrate what healthy can actually do. That when you think of making healthy choices, you're not a rabbit. You know, you're, you're not crunching on celery sticks all the, the time. There's a whole plethora of things that when you actually combine it, you're actually weaponizing your body with these fresh ingredients. Where can That's they find the pineapple? Where can they find the pineapple tea recipe, Chef Riri? So the recipe on, come on, Dr. Mel, you know I ain't going to sell that recipe. My grandmama will, will kill me. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was actually giving them a chance, giving yeah, you a chance to yeah, say but, where your but, website but truly, is. Yeah, but truly, what, 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 what I can actually tell them is that the, um, the recipe um, I already told you, there, there are some secret ingredients that we actually use, but it's anybody can do it. You get fresh pineapple, ginger root, cinnamon sticks, bring that to, to, to a boil, leave it alone. Don't open the lid. Don't look at the pot. Don't bother the pot. The pot is doing what it needs to do. Leave it for three days. Then you sweeten that with cane sugar and fresh squeezed lemon lemon juice. I promise you, hot or cold, okay. it is amazing. All right. But to get our it. version, just hit me up on Instagram or face, Facebook to what, order it. So we go, that brings us to a couple points. We want to bring up where they can find both of you. Not yet, mm -hmm. because we're okay. going into a lightning round. And all these questions okay. have to be, we, we got a lot of questions, so they need to be answered fast. And we're going to get to it right now. So here we go. Now I can't find. Would, uh, <laughs> when do you ever recommend uh, bariatric surgery? Dr. Lisa? Well, as a naturopathic doctor, as the last resort, <laughs> <laughs> as the last resort. 
So if you've tried everything and you can't and you can't can't work, then it's a last resort for me. Um, but when your when your health is at significant risk, you have to lose the weight. So that would probably be my answer. You know, after after ever you tried everything, but your health is still in jeopardy, then yes, then I would recommend it. Yeah. Okay. For, for both the doctor and the chef, do you have a favorite smoothie recipe, particularly for um, speeding up the metabolism and anti-inflammatory? Yes. Chef Riri first, first and Dr. Lisa next. Okay. It's called the green, the green carrot cake smoothie. It's a green ca ca carrot cake. Um, so everybody taking notes, you ready? Let's go. Carrots, kale, ginger root, sweet potato, any kind of um, any kind of granola blend that you, you would like. If you don't have the, the, the granola brand, uh, blend, you can use oats and cinnamon, right? What you're going to also, you're going to put that, that in the blender. I highly recommend, and Khalifa, if you are listening, give me an endorsement, the Khalifa brand coconut almond milk with a little bit of cayenne pepper and some unsweetened yogurt. Blend that thing up. Tell Chef Riri how much you love her after that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Dr. Lisa. <laughs> now, I hope my mine might not taste as good as hers, but uh, it's therapeutic. All right, so um, using a high-powered mixer like a Vitamix or a Blendtec or something along those lines, mm -hmm. um, start mm -hmm. with a slice of lime or a slice of lemon, uh, two handfuls of kale or some kind of green drink, um, green uh, vegetable. You want to uh, use chia seeds, but you have to about a tablespoon and a half of chia seeds, but you have to soak them to make it chia gel. Um, and then you can add um, mm. I'm a, a frozen food kind of fruit girl. So I just take a handful of your favorite frozen um Fruit, berries or something a little okay. bit yeah mm -hmm. berries usually for for low but um a slice of a slice of either turmeric or ginger and then um i you can if you're trying to make a a, a say a, a meal replacement you want to have maybe a protein powder or a, a good source of protein almond milk coconut milk something all those lines and then a tad bit of monk fruit or stevia okay okay great all right, all right. you so, heard it here so we have we, we're gonna go back and dig in the crates for this one. We have a preg, uh, a uh, COVID question: Is pregnancy an underlying condition? A young mother, six months preg pregnant, died from COVID this past week. Yes, uh, unfortunately, it is. Uh, women who are pregnant are higher risk when they get COVID mm -hmm. of everything from uh, premature labor to. Um, uh, uh, hemorrhaging, bleeding, a, a lot of the complications of pregnancy. They're at higher risk for stroke as well uh, and blood clots. So for those, for those reasons, um, you know, a lot of OBGYNs are encouraging their pregnant patients to get vaccinated against COVID uh, because pregnancy is a high risk um, uh, condition uh, for COVID. Okay. Next question comes from one of our stars, Valerie Spalding Parker. She says, it can be done. I lost 130 pounds over the past two years. Come on, Val. Wow. And what, what you have found is the mind, what have you found is the mindset and habits of those who lose weight and keep it off? Excellent question. I'll take that one. Uh, if, oh, okay. But um, so first of all, you have to know you can do it. You have to believe. If you don't believe, forget it. It's not going to happen. You have to create a regimen. You have to create a lifestyle. That means everything around you has to support the, that process, right? So your food, your sleep, you have to move. Not you, Now, exercise is very different um, for different people. So you can't just choose an exercise plan. You have to choose it based on your abilities. But you have to exercise effectively. But, but the, the key is you have to let everybody around you know that that's what you're doing so that they can mm -hmm. support you. Those who don't support you, just push them off to the side. Put them to the side. And keep, and, that's right. And keep doing what you're doing because your whole world 
has to be surrounded by and an intentional with that with that goal. So, yeah. And Chef Riri, I think you wanted to add too. Yeah, um, I am a weight loss, weight release survivor. <laughs> um, and what worked for me, I coined it my AC unit. My AC unit is accountability and creativity. Like um, Dr. Um, Lewis said, absolutely put everybody, everybody, the whole of them, put everybody on notice. This is what I'm doing and I am absolutely serious about it, right? But also surround yourself with people who will hold you accountable and don't get offended when accountability checks you. You can't be offended. And creativity, creativity in your, your fitness. Like we're not gonna walk the, um, the treadmill for like five five years, you know, switch stuff up. Get around with people who do cray cray things. Like do some of those like, um, you know, American Ninja Warrior Park things. Well, they're probably not open now, but get creative, creative with your workout and creative with that plate. Biking, so you swimming, AC walking, AC right. accountability and creativity. Accountability and creativity with your, with your food too, because if you get yes. with what you're eating, it's a wrap. One hundred percent. You have to be creative around your food. One hundred percent. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. That's it. All right. Any more lightning round questions? That is it. We are lightning. Wow! Out. Wonderful. I want to just quickly go to Dr. Lewis because yesterday we talked a little bit in our pre-meeting about the energetics of food, and. Um, uh, turmeric and ginger and cayenne were mentioned. Why, why are those important? Yeah. So, um, they actually boost the metabolism. So they're considered hot foods. So we have cold foods, we have warm foods, we have hot foods. So those types of cinnamon, the one, all the ones she mentioned in the pineapple, in the pineapple, was it, was that pineapple tea? Hot tea. Or, tea. Yeah. Yep. All those are, so they were all hot. And so they heat up the body, boost the, boost the metabolism. And so there's not just the taste of the food, it's what it does inside the body. So that's why we call it food energetics, because it's how it reacts inside the body, not, not exactly just what it tastes like. And, it, and, and it's I know really that. Powerful. Yeah. yeah. So all of uh, those are hot foods. So it's good, good stuff. <laughs> I know that's from your Chinese medicine training, right? Yes, ma'am. Chinese medicine yeah, all the way. Yeah. They, they right. eat every part of Every, every part of the uh, root, the, the well, like I said, the rooted to the root, they eat everything, mm -hmm. and they know right. they know what it's all used for. But right. you know, it's not just always Chinese medicine, by the way. Right, you know, but che Chef Riri, wh where can they find you? And then uh, Dr. Lewis, where can they find you? Okay, so I am easy to find. I am on Instagram and on Facebook at Riri's Kitchen. No e in kitchen. Um, if you put me in the kitchen, you will find somebody else, not Chef Riri. <laughs> I don't want you to find me. Um, our website is under construction right now. We're doing a major re uh, overhaul of the, the website. But if people go to ririskitchen.com, they will still be able to, um, to contact me with Facebook and, and Instagram. And we also have a free cooking community called Make We Cook Now. That means that let's get cooking in, in Jamaica. In Jamaica. And, um, People can find recipes, resources. That is my culinary playground. Um, that's my culinary baby, if you will. So hit me right. up. Um, I am your help. And before we, we go, I do have one recipe that I want, I want to share. This is called the hot shot. And I always try to do something exclusive for any kind of speaking engagement oh. I have. And so piggybacking on um, Dr. Chef Riri, Lewis. We, we might have to ask you to put that, put that in the I chat will. just so that we can Absolutely. make sure we get to Dr. Lewis's information. Thanks, though. Absolutely. Uh-huh. All right. So I'm, I'm pretty easy. It's Dr. Lisa Lewis. So Dr. L-I-S-A-L-E-W-I-S. Um, dot com. So it's Dr. Lisa Lewis dot com. Dr. Lisa Lewis on Facebook. Dr. Lisa Lewis on Instagram. Um, and my so my primary goal is to help support people who are baffled by what's going on with their body. So I support people in in figuring it out, getting to the cause. Um, offer discovery sessions to support people in understanding natural medicine a little bit more. Have a 
Vitality University membership. It's kind, of, it's all kinds of stuff. A product line, you'll find it all on the website. It's full of stuff, so no worries. So <laughs> I think you all will agree with me that we had two wonderful guests tonight. Thank you so yeah. much for all the wealth of information <laughs> that you offered. Um, you know, I think we would agree that you know, it's important when it comes to thinking about managing your weight, accountability, creativity, having the right mindset, focusing on your energy uh, um, in terms of your, your mental wellness and your focus, as well as getting enough sleep, getting enough hydration, uh, because those things also, too, contribute to underlying inflammation in your body, which then can also make it harder for you to lose weight. We've heard some wonderful things. Um, I also, of course, want to thank my wonderful producers, uh, Miss Lila Mays and Mr. Wayne Bruce. Uh, you can catch me tomorrow. Uh, I will be on the Rust Park Morning Show tomorrow morning at 8.50 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, I'll also be, for those of you who are uh, WHUR, Howard University, radio listeners i will be on the daily drum tomorrow at 7 p.m so you can catch me there but if you don't catch me in either of those places you can definitely catch me here next week monday night 9 p.m streaming on facebook and youtube and until i see you wherever it is remember please be wise be well and be health empowered thanks so much for joining <laughs>